was 12 months ago. Um, and one of the highlights, I thought, it, your your form was certainly a highlight last year, but uh, as was the opening of Bankwest Stadium. And it was it was a year ago uh, yeah. where you put 50 on, on the West Tigers. That was that was quite a day, wasn't it, at, at your new stadium? Yeah, it was, um, you know, we were... We spoke about that game from uh, the start of our preseason. That was that was going to be our new home. We obviously had been um, bank, it was obviously Bankwest was getting built and hadn't had a home ground pretty much uh, for two years. We we're playing out of ANZ, so um, you know we spoke about that from the start of preseason. You know we really wanted to earn earn the right to play there, and so we hopefully started off the year well, which is what we did. And um, I guess we I guess we did earn the right to, to have a home ground like that. And, we're very lucky in that in that way that Bank West has um, you know put such a good facility together. I guess and um, yeah, it was a it was a pretty special day and um, something that the the boys were were very excited from the first day that came to preseason. I'm going to give you a hypothetical. You're going to get selective amnesia and you can only take one memory away. Is it this game or is it the final against Brisbane, 58 nil, Bank West? But there was a noise to the first one. Uh, you pick. Which one would you take as as the lifelong memory? Uh, the semi final, I think. Um, you know, there was, it was pretty hard to beat the the first game of Bankwest, but you know, the semi final that was my first semi final win, um, and such a on such a big occasion, uh, home semi, and to to do it the way we did it was was outstanding and, and against the quality side, I guess. So um, I'll probably have to stick with the semi final. There's no doubt that um, Blaine lights out football, Mitch, when the season stopped and. The acquisition of uh, the great Andrew Johns came to Parramatta. Uh, for the, some of the viewers at home, uh, talk about the technical things and some of the skills that he's improved in your game. Yeah, um, I think, you know, just, just really simplifying my game, I guess, and, you know, pretty much teaching me how to draw a player in, a little thing that, you know, I probably took for granted a bit, I guess, growing up. And I don't think I've really had a had a halves coach. And um, to have Joey come in and, and teach me, you know, just little things that I've, I'd never known before, to be honest. And um, he's taught me these little things. I did a session with him the other day and I got a lot out of just doing a, a one-on-one session with him. So, um, yeah, it's it, I'm still learning as well. Um, he's a very smart footballer and he expects things straight away. So, um, he's but he's been outstanding for me and uh, hopefully I can learn a bit more of him. So now when you go to line with all the different options you've got, does he improve your decision making? Like, is your mind at a different point when you're making that decision to run, pass, or, or kick? Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, it was it was simple things just like that. Where, you know, before before Joey came, I was just going on the line and, and looking to commit one player instead of, you know, using my eyes and mm. and, and looking at all options. Um, it was it was simple things like that that just when I when I put it into practice, it was working at training and things were coming together. So, um, you know, it was a bit upsetting that we. We had to pull up after two rounds. We only finally started getting our groove towards that second half against the Titans. So um, it'd be exciting to, to come back and, and see if we still got it. You know, 2016, I think it was, where it was a heartbreak. It was the salary cap year. And you found out, what, midway through the season and, and playing pretty decent football in the end, but ended up falling short. So you know the heartbreak of that. What if the NRL came to you and said... Guys, we're sorry, but those first two rounds don't count. We're starting again. How devastating would that be? Yeah, it would have been pretty devastating. Obviously, started the, the season pretty good and um, would have been a bit upsetting to, to have those points taken away. But um, but you know, hopefully, I, I don't think it's getting taken away, is it? So it's, um, you know, we just got to keep our, keep our head and worry about what we can, we can control and... Um, that's just playing footy, good footy. So, see how we go. I, I don't think they're getting taken away, but it, uh, it does. Hey, hey, the heavy, <laughs> hitters, the, the heavy hitters are writing seems letters, Brandy. <laughs> seems to be a push from, from certain circles that uh, that might want those I'll two you points. Now, I'm, I'm by, I, can't, I can't comment on it. Because, and that's why... A, oh, because you're a, a board people, member. Well, I, I, of course I don't want the points <laughs> taken away. We've, yeah. we've just won two games. Like, I yeah, don't exactly. Want <laughs> now, if you, were a, if you were at a club that lost the two games... Yeah. And okay, I'll say it. If Nick Politis's team was two and zero, would he be writing letters? No, he wouldn't. That's no, right. I'm happy to exactly say it. He would not. Here's one for Mitch about talking about the, you know, the game not um, not having a trophy or just playing for broadcast requirements. Mitch, I'll throw it over to you. Obviously, Parramatta, uh, two wins. You're playing, you know, arguably the best football of your career. What happens if the NRL came back and said, "Listen, uh, there's going to be no trophy at the end of this season. We're just going to fulfil obligations to broadcast to maximise revenue." How would you feel about a season that is not up for a trophy but still competing? Yeah, no. Nah. 
uh, I, I wouldn't be happy about it, I guess. And, you know, you put all the hard work in the pre-season and how long our pre-seasons are to, to put your body through the things that you do there and then, you know, play for pretty much nothing at the end of the year. I just don't think that's that's right. And um, I know, I, I think I could probably speak for most of the boys in my team that, you know, they'd be pretty filthy on that as well. So, um, you know, playing playing for a trophy, I still, how many games we miss? I think we're missing, what, six games or something? Something like that. Uh, yeah, possibly. yeah. That, that, possibly. Like, probably depending probably on how long. If, yeah. if we get started on the 28th of May, we, we can go through, and, and Paul Kent said today, we can go through right until December. You could... You could almost get the whole 20, thing in. You could get 20 rounds. I think if we start yeah. May 28, we get, we're done by end of November and we've got everything I, in. I just I just don't think. And I, I'm, I'm with Mitch and, and Cooper. You, you can't it. play for nothing. It can't yes. be an exhibition. No, it can't 20 be. weeks. No. Just just rolling around and playing footy for, for nothing at the end of it. No, I agree. Yeah, no, nah, I don't um, think so. Mate, I've, I've spoken to Joey a couple of times about, you know, what he, the work he's doing with you and, and, you know, he's spoken to me about Dylan Brown and... He's in, you know, he's in raptures about Dylan Brown. What, what are your thoughts on, on Dylan Brown? What can we expect of him? And he's only a, a baby. He's only just started. Yeah, but, nineteen. Yeah, you're nineteen um, exactly. Yeah, it's he's a he's just a special player. It just feels like you know the things he does at training um, is pretty surprising. Like it's, it, it almost takes you back a bit, and um, you know he's just it just looks like he's got a lot of time on his hands, and that's that's how I feel playing with him. He's he's such a calm. Calm kid, and I, you know, I let him know straight away from the time he came in that, you know, put all the pressure on me, and um, you know, I'll take all the pressure off you. You just go play your own footy, and I think that's um, that's why our combination is working so well at the moment. You know, he's he's a kid that, you know, he's not the biggest talker, but he, he's definitely learning, and um, I think having Joey there is, is definitely going to help him in that in that aspect. But you know, he's he's 19 years old. We've got to remember, so um, he's still learning the game, and. He's only going to get better as 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 the, as the games go on. Uh, I think he, you know, he was he was our best player against the Gold Coast. So mm. hopefully he can build on that towards the end of the, uh, when we get back started. All right, we've got to let you go, Mitch.